Member for Solomon. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, improving integrity and good governance was a major election commitment of the Albanese Labor government. And this was rightly one of the Australian people's top priorities at the last federal election. And if I can say so, uh, your appointment to your position, Mr. Speaker, has helped us get back on track. I've spent uh, quite some time in this place talking about uh, the need after the last decade for us to rebuild the ethical infrastructure of our nation. And that is what we are getting on to. Uh, it's been obvious that this is uh, required and has been incredibly clear that our trajectory as a country uh, has not been good enough in recent years. Our international reputation uh, was in the past for having robust institutions, the rule of law and integrity uh, but it, in particular in the last decade that has been backsliding against many metrics. So this is not a partisan point. Let's hear what the different uh, organisations have had to say. We've seen this backsliding in the last decade in the Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index, which measures trust in government. And that data showed that between 2012 and 2018, Australia slid to 13th place in the index. A 2018 Australia Institute report calculated that perceptions of growing corruption in Australia shaved 4% off our GDP due to the hit to business confidence. And that had a real cost to us of a massive $72 billion. Uh, but over the last decade, it got worse. Between 2018 to 2021, Australia dropped five more slots to reach 18th place in the Corruption Perception Index. Now, this picture is even more abysmal when you add it to the result of the 2022 Elderman Trust Barometer, which found the trust in government declined precipitously in 2021. And I don't need to remind honourable members here uh, many of the reasons for that. The study found that politics have become viewed as a dividing force by Australians. Now, uh, yesterday, the member for Kennedy uh, mentioned that he was once part of a uh, fascist government that uh, locked people up for protesting. Well. 61% of Australians responding to the study I just mentioned in 2021 reported feeling unable to have civil debates about issues they disagree with. Now, as members know, the culture of this place is often seen as a bellwether of the broader social malaise of distrust, and, this, and that is why there was such an urgent need for action when our government came to office. And that is also why we could quickly move to implement our commitment to legislate a powerful, transparent and independent National Anti-Corruption Commission, uh, the NAC Act, which passed both Houses of Parliament in November. Our government is also reforming whistleblower protections through the Public Interest Disclosure Amendment Review Bill 2022. This is all part of our commitment to the Australian people to restore trust and integrity to government. Today, uh, we continue to consider a piece of legislation to increase transparency that many of us never thought we would need. The Ministers of State Amendment Bill 2022 before us will implement reforms that foster greater transparency and accountability in our system of government. This bill responds to the revelations that Australians learned about in August last year that their former Prime Minister, the member for Cook, had secretly sworn himself into five extra portfolios occupied, uh, that were already occupied by his own ministers uh, in 2020 and 2021. So that, in addition to being appointed to administer the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, the former Prime Minister was invested with the power to administer the Departments of Health, Finance, Industry, Science, Energy and Resources, Treasury 
and home affairs. The news of these secret appointments shocked many Australians and also shocked many around the world. And it also goes without saying that it shocked many uh, members on all uh, sides of this parliament when it came to light, probably except for a, a select few. They're in the former Prime Minister's circle. This was an issue that truly cut across political lines. Of these multiple portfolios, uh, former Prime Minister John Howard said, and I quote, I don't think he should have done that. I don't think there was any need to do it and I wouldn't have, end quote. And then the next coalition uh, Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, said, and I quote, I'm just not going to defend what was done. It is just highly unconventional, highly unorthodox and shouldn't have happened, end quote. The next coalition PM, Malcolm Turnbull, said, and I quote, this is sinister stuff. This is secret government. This is one of the most appalling things I've ever heard in our federal government. I mean, the idea that a prime minister would be sworn into other ministers' uh, ministries secretly is incredible." End quote. It was in this context of widespread and bipartisan shock that uh, the government acted to prevent this ever happening again. Our government referred these matters to the Solicitor General Dr Stephen Donoghue KC. As was clear from his advice, and again I quote, the principles of responsible government are fundamentally undermined by the actions of the former government, end quote. Many who still sit on the opposition benches, on the benches opposite us today, were part of the government that allowed this culture, that allowed this behaviour to happen. In his advice, the Solicitor General noted that, and I quote, the Governor General has no discretion to refuse to accept the Prime Minister's advice in relation to such an ap appointment, end quote. But while the Solicitor General advised that Prime Minister Scott Morrison, the member for Cook, had acted lawfully and in accordance with the Constitution, he did so only because the current rules did not require notification of such an appointment to be valid. Now, that's obviously an omission that we learn can be misused to undermine transparency in federal parliament at the very least and to accumulate power in too few hands at the worst. Following the Solicitor General's advice, it was also clear that an appropriate and swift inquiry was needed. So, on the 26th of August last year, the Prime Minister and the Attorney General announced the appointment of former High Court Justice the Hon. Virginia Bell AC, to lead the inquiry into the appointment of the former Prime Minister to administer multiple departments. The report was provided to our government on the 25th of November last year and has been published online. This is an outstanding, incisive report that goes to the core of this unfortunate story in vivid detail. And thanks to the report, for example, we know that Mr Frydenberg, the then Treasurer was not informed of the then Prime Minister's appointment to administer the Department of the Treasury. The report draws on first-hand interviews with parliamentarians and officials involved in this case. Now, this inquiry, Mr Deputy Speaker, was not about the politics but about how this happened, about why it happened and about who knew about it. The Ministers of State Amendment Bill 2022 forms one part, an important part, of our government's respond to Ms Bell's recommendations. Now, in response, the bill will require the official secretary to the Governor-General to publish a notifiable instrument registered on the Federal Register of Legislation as soon as reasonably practicable that the Governor-General has chosen, summoned and sworn an executive councillor to the Federal Executive Council, appointed an officer to administer a Department of State or directed a Minister of State to hold an office. It will also require notification when any of these positions are revoked. The notifiable instrument will include the name of the person, so we understand who's been sworn, the Department of State and the date on which they were sworn, appointed or directed. In the case of 
revocations, the notifiable instrument must include the name of the person, the name of the former office and the date that, that such membership appointment or direction was revoked. This bill demonstrates the government's readiness to act promptly to restore the Australian people's confidence in our federal system of government and to rebuild integrity in public sector institutions, processes and officials. Transparency in government processes is not a nice to have. It is essential because our system of parliamentary democracy relies on conventions and checks and balances. And as the Solicitor General concluded, it is impossible for the parliament to hold ministers to account for the administration of departments if it does not know which ministers are responsible for which departments." End quote. Pretty simple stuff, Mr Deputy Speaker. We need to know who is responsible for the discharge of what responsibilities. The measures in this bill will go some way to provide greater integrity and transparency around the process of appointing elected officials to high office, and especially to ensure we have a system of government where one person cannot again garner powers without adequate accountability to the Australian people and the Australian parliament. It will ensure the Australian people are able to access information relating to the composition of the Federal Executive Council, those appointed to administer certain departments of state and the high offices that ministers of state hold. This is a technical change, an important change with positive and long-term implications for our democracy. Like the American experiment, the Australian project relies for its legitimacy in the eyes of the people on a raft of rules, principles and conventions that are not necessarily laws. In this case, the convention was that members of the executive could not legitimately accrue more power without their own parliamentary colleagues and, of course, the public knowing about it. Our system of government had until now assumed this norm to be widely understood and to not need any specific act of parliament to enshrine it into law. Unfortunately, through the actions of the former Prime Minister and his inner circle that were aware of this, we have learned that we can no longer assume anything. I wish there had been no need for this bill. Obviously, everyone does, but there clearly is a need. And so I commend this bill to the House and welcome this reform that will strengthen transparency and good governance, no matter the government of the day. Crucially, this bill will also help to restore citizens' trust in government from the dangerously low levels we have seen. And Deputy Speaker, earlier in my contribution, I went through that slide in the last decade that we've seen in trust in government. <coughs> this bill will contribute to making our democracy stronger by shedding light on ministerial and other high-level appointments. In a mature democracy like ours, this shouldn't be optional, it should be law. And this bill makes sure that it is law and joins with our other measures to start rebuilding the ethical infrastructure of our great nation. That's what the Australian people expect of all of us. And so I call on all sides of parliament, all parties, all independents to support this bill. Thank you, Deputy Speaker.